DC Multiverse! How's it going everybody? Welcome back. Today, why don't we take a look at the McFarland Toys DC Multiverse Collect to Build Beast Boy Wave, which includes Nightwing, Donna Troy, Raven, and Arsenal. And just for added fun, we're also going to be looking at the gold label Beast Boy figure. Once we put together that Beast Boy, it'll be a six figure mega review. So we've got them all out of the package and staged together in front of my fancy schmancy gray curtain in the order that they're numbered on the box just so that we can see everything that we got on the inside of the package. We got Dick who comes with, well, not his Escrima sticks. And then we got Donna, she has a gigantic sword. And then we have Raven who comes with these two nice bright pink Barbie colored little energy things that you stick on her hand. Arsenal has his bow, his quiver, and his clump of arrows. And you can see Beast Boy way down the end there. He comes with a bird, a green eagle. It's funny because the previous Beast Boy figure that Mattel released, he also came with a green birdie. Look, here's both the birdies. Of course, also, every figure comes with a trading card, so here's all five of them. We have Nightwing, Donna, Raven, Arsenal, and Beast Boy. So as previously stated, when you buy each figure in this wave, you have all the pieces for the Collect to Build Beast Boy. Nightwing comes with the torso, Donna Troy comes with the arms, without the hands, Raven comes with the head and both of the hands, while Arsenal comes with Beast Boy's legs. And then all of these pieces for the Collect to Build Beast Boy, we're just gonna put them off to the side and for the time being, look at each figure individually, starting with Nightwing. Now I'm gonna go toe to head with this guy right now, and you tell me if you've seen this basic body buck anywhere before. Anywhere at all? What's that you say? It's been used how many times? <laughs> that many? Woo! Darn, mate, that is one heck of a lot of uses of this body. And I don't think Nightwing necessarily is the best use of this body buck. And I say this in the most respectful way, but I mean, look at when we bring Tim in next to Dick here. I mean, Tim's thicker than Dick. Like, this is not a bad Nightwing figure in general. It just, when I compare his scale and, say, Kyle Rayner, he should be more along the size of Kyle. No, wait, and of course, I need to compare him to the rest of the Bat family. The Batman is obviously huge compared to him. And the rest of the Bat family, the scales are kind of weird, right? But I feel wrong with Dick being smaller than Red Hood. I feel like Jason should be at least only the same size as Nightwing. It would have been nice also though, if these little rounded sockets had been painted. I mean, they were painted on this version of Nightwing. This is the box set version. So it would be kind of neat if that was also continued on to this one, because having that black right there just kind of break up the blue is, is just, just weird looking. I do like the logo inlay on his chest there, the Nightwing symbol. I like the fact that they actually made the bottoms of his boots blue and I do like the return to the full stripe along the arm that ends over the hands. It would have been nice if he had open hands for grabbing Eschema sticks, however there's no place to put the Eschema sticks as well. Well, uh, why? I mean they're right here and this version of Nightwing also has them, so why not this one? Well I'll tell you why. It all comes back to the fact that he doesn't have openable hands anyway, and he doesn't come with Eschema Sticks, which is, you know, Nightwing is supposed to come with Eschema Sticks. That's like the thing. That's like his weapon. Anyway, moving on to the next part, which would be the face sculpt. This is a dick face that you either love or hate. You either say to yourself, self, I really love the face that they've sculpted here with the spaghetti hair strands hanging down in his mask. I think it is the best ever. This is the epitome of every kid that I've ever met that I wanted to walk up to them with a pair of scissors and snip the hair out from in front of their eyeballs. This is what they're trying to go for here, so I get it. 
they're not making things up on the spot at McFarland Toys. I just... For me, it's just really distracting. And then if we lift the hair out of old Dickie Pooh's face here, the other thing that people aren't so keen on is the eyes. Like the whole one eye bigger than the other. It's just, it's, you know. And in truth, if the QC control was better at the factory as far as the face mask and the eye painting. Here, look at this. There you go. That is completely different. I feel like it would actually work a lot better. Except for the, uh... Spaghetti hair. Yeah, after the video, I'm definitely going to take some nail trimmers to that and trim it so it's not down in his eyes anymore. He's also not a terribly articulated figure. I mean, you can get him. You can, you know, kick the back of his head. That's pretty good, right? Who doesn't want to kick the back of their head? And he can spin right around like an owl, like that. Do it, do woo, do it, do wee. Ooh, Canadians will get that, Americans won't. And then you've got the rounded, sockety arms like that. You got your bicep swivels, 360 full. You got your crunchy double jointed elbows. You've got your head that can look down and up, way down and way up. Very, very good. You've also got that. Do I really need to go through the articulation for all of these guys? I guess if it makes sense. I mean, we've seen this body before, right? So we know what this is going to do. We know that yeah, it's going to be a fairly articulated body. I'd never really have a huge problem with this body buck, except for I really want to see... Oh, that one's not too bad. Let's get that up close and have a look. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm actually really okay with this dick's articulation, for sure. And now we move on to the first of Wonder Woman's legacy heroes, Donna Troy. This version of Donna Troy, they've tried very hard to break up the black by adding extra gray that wasn't exactly part of the original design of this character. And by not exactly, I mean not at all. To me, this is clearly based off of a Rebirth version of Donna Troy, and really based off of this specific image illustrated by John Boy Mayer. Overall, as far as this Donna's body scale goes, you know, body parts with body parts, not bad. I think that this is a really great representation of this character. And I know that there will be those of you at home wondering about Donna Troy's face sculpt. What is up with all that black around her eyes that we saw in those promo images? Well, up close and impersonal, looking at these images that I've taken, it's really not as pronounced as it is in those images, and it doesn't look nearly as dark in hand as it does in any of these images. Do I think it's ideal? Probably not. I would go for less or no dark shading around those eyes. But just as a face sculpt, I like the profile of this. And it really is quite a tidy, quite neat, well-painted head sculpt as well. I will point out that there is an absolute buttload of blue. And I am not super keen on that much blue being in her hair. I would have rather it just been painted black. But I do understand why they did that for the same reason that they added so much gray to the figure, I would think. Like, I think what they're trying to do is break up the black and make her more appealing on a shelf, I would think. Like, th there's not supposed to be that much gray. Wow, she's got a badunk. That is a badunk a dunk Nice skin tone, by the way, too. I like that as well. And the sculpted details, I mean, they're fine. I, I, I really do like how she's been sculpted. This is great, and there's textures, absolutely everywhere. Her Amazon belt. This is definitely her rebirth look for sure. Later on, she wasn't depicted as having white shoulder pauldrons and, and as well as the gray not being there, but I think in general they did a fantastic job with this Donna Troy. Here she is compared to the DC Universe Classics version on the left. That one's never looked right. And on this side, we've got a DC Direct version of Donna Troy. I never liked that one either, because she's standing really weird, and her fingers are freakishly long. About the only redeeming thing about this Donna Troy is her cle uh, uh, her head sculpt. That's a fantastic take on the character. She maybe looks a little bit dead in the eyes, but, you know, I, I think that it's a pretty darn good head profile. And here she is just with some other Amazons. You got a Cassie on one side, and you got a Wonder Woman on the other one. One thing I am wondering about is exactly how articulated she is. I have not actually put her through any kind of ringer yet. Wow, that's actually pretty 
good. That hair though, that hair though, that is really going to get in the way. And those shoulder pauldrons, okay, that one goes up, yes. What's this one getting? Oh, oh, clickety clack. Oh, wow, okay. I take that back. The shoulder pauldrons really aren't that bad for getting in the way that way. However, don't expect her to be able to raise her arms up. She ain't catching a baseball anytime soon. We have bicep swivels that are hidden nicely by her uniform there. Double jointed elbies. We got wrist hinges and, uh, oh goodness. Well, they're really covered up with the braces, but I don't really care. And of course we have the ball joint here and the ball joint here, which I've already illustrated. She's got that there. Stop looking up her can. We got the legs, I got to do that, and you got the double jointed knees. They're really well, I like that, and then she can be like, watch out, kick you right in the face, stretch out nicely. She's got a rounded hinge in the ankle. And then on the other side of this here high heel, she's got toe articulation. Ooh, look at it pivot. And now let's look at the daughter of the demon Trigon, Raven. Now this version of her suit, I'm not entirely sure where it comes from. I think she wore a suit like this very briefly not too long ago, but I don't think that this exact suit really has stuck around for all that long. And honestly, if I could have chose one suit to put her in that was more modern, you're looking at it now, that's probably what I would have chose. But hey, beggars can't be choosers, or is that collectors can't be choosers? Oh, <laughs> same thing. And if nobody told me this was Raven, I would still know who it is. I recognize the medallion at the front of her hooded cloak. I always wondered what the point of these feathery things were. I mean, I suppose her name's Raven, and ravens have feathers. And of course, the classic belt with the circles, the hooded cloak that she wears, these are all essential parts of her design. But having the blue with the black and then the more blue here, I'm just not entirely sure where it comes from. Her cape has a nice texture to it. It's kind of soft, it bends out of the way, and her face sculpt actually isn't that bad. I'm kind of tempted to take the hood off and see what's going on under there. Maybe if I got my hands on a second one, but this is actually a pretty darn good head sculpt, and the paint on mine is pretty tidy, so no complaints. And I do like the fact that I've gone with a pasty white skin for this version of Raven rather than a more fleshy tone color. As for how articulated this girl is, well, I think we'll find that she's fairly average as far as McFarlane's figures. Oh goodness. Oh. Oh boy. Oh. Oh wow. That's not fairly average. That's, that's way back. Can she lean down forward really well? Wow. Well that's, you know, especially when you combine the waist with it. Okay. That's... Not bad. Not bad at all. However, don't expect the head sculpt to do a whole lot inside of that big rubbery hood because, well, it won't. <laughs> because it's, well, it's inside of a big rubbery hood. And her arms under the cloak, you get T. And that's about it. Uh, you, you roll them around and up and stuff like that. But the cloak is definitely going to get in the way. Bicep swivel 360, double jointed elbows and wrists on a rounded hinge. Of course, down here, ooh, what she got? And that's actually, well, that could be a lot worse. Yeah, I like that, that's pretty good. And, well, that could be better, as often. Double jointed knees, nicely done, and the rounded hinge in the ankle shaped to look like the pants with the toe articulation and the pivot. Very nice. And now we turn our attention to Arsenal. And this version of the character looks actually quite a bit like he does in the comic books. He, they've pretty much copied the source material bit for bit because the only real difference that I see here is the fact that the source material actually has that dreaded maroonish brown color. Well, that's actually black in the source material. It's not you know, a, mar a you know a brownish reddish maroon, which I think actually works for this figure. So there really is no complaint here from me. I I think the overall color scheme looks nice. Of course, he's loaded from toe to head with textures. The suit that he's wearing, all the red 
is one texture, and then the darker color here, that brownish maroon color, well, that's also another one. Maybe it's kind of, uh, you know, supposed to be a leathery texture. Pouches of plenty going all the way around his belt there. He has a utility belt, and then some nice little pouches on the side for holding more tricks and goodies. Nice red knee pads. Interesting choice of footwear, having very unique grips on the bottom. And they've done a great job reproducing the tattoos on Arsenal's left arm. And, you know, a pretty good job on the left, although mine has a smudge. Arsenal's head sculpt is not too shabby. I'm not a huge fan of the gigantic glasses look. And up close, you know, I mean, it could be certainly a tad neater. I mean, here's what you're, I mean, this is, you're just looking at the, the basic out of the box, but I've photoshopped it here to look, but you know, this is what it would look like if all the paint kind of went where it was supposed to, and it was just neater. Don't get me wrong, I do understand. I mean, these head sculpts are really small, which means some of this stuff is just tiny to paint, and it's really only in the person's hand for a few moments, so I understand that they're not going to be able to paint these perfectly. They have a quota for the day, as every factory does. He's got his backwards hat here. I do think it would have been neat had it, you know, been able to turn around, or you could like pop it off and then turn it around the other way. You know, much like they did with the old DC Collectibles arsenal. You could just like turn the hat all the way around and you can wear it frontwards or backwards. But overall for me, I think that this really is the standout figure of the wave. And you know, just like with Green Arrow, you take the little peg, stick it in his back, and he's got the, the clump of arrows right here. Would have been nice, like I said before, if he had it came with an actual arrow to have in his fingers. This bow is not too bad. The string is huge. It's like they attached a hose to it instead of some horse hair, but honestly, I don't think that there's a real problem with this. It's made to come with an action figure as an accessory that costs well under what most other action figures are going for these days. As for comparisons with this guy, well, I've brought in the DC Collectibles and the DC Universe Classics and the DC Direct versions of Arsenal or Red Arrow. The two on the left are Red Arrow and the one on the far right, that's Arsenal. And just for funsies, here he is with Oliver the Green Arrow, also from McFarlane Toys. I think these two look pretty good together. But now from here, the next question is going to be, as always, how articulated is this figure? Well, torso shows a lot of promise with that rounding ball joint there. The waist has the same amount of articulation. So, yep, I am satisfied with that. Then we got the noodle. You can look down, way down. He can look up, well, a little bit. <laughs> but he can look down, so that's a thing. You gotta watch where you're going, not where you've been. And then you have the arms up in a deep pose, all the way up. You wanna move them up. Other than that, you gotta round the arms out and they stick out a little bit like he's doing the YMCA. Of course, we have the 360 bicep swivel, double crunched up jointed elbows, rounded hinge in the wrist. I mean, we know this is basic McFarlane articulative properties. We can expect roughly that from these guys. What does he get? Well, that one's all right. Let's just really work this one in. Come on, come on, give it to me, give it to me. Come on, what do you got for me? Nah. Not a lot. Meow, meow. We have double jointed knees. Yeah. So we can, you know, do that. And we have the ankles rounded hinge, up and down, round, round on a pivot with the toe articulation, the stubby articulation. Cool beans. And now we know he's not really part of the wave, but let's have a look at Beast Boy. This version of Beast Boy uses the same body as Dick Grayson Nightwing and Superboy Connell and John Kent Superman and the Impulse Flash and the Superman with the, you know what we're saying here, very used body buck. And I think it works out okay on Gar. Not the worst. Of course, we can tell that, you know, it's got the Superboy boots. And I have heard some people mention their dissatisfaction with the fact that the white is really um, quite not white. Like, it's really kind of faded 
gray-ish, sort of. It's, it's not white-white. I don't have a problem with that, though, although this one shoulder is definitely darker than, well, the rest of the figure. I guess it kind of goes down this arm and then it lightens up on this fist, but I don't personally care that much. I feel like this guy may have been an afterthought just to give people a regular Beast Boy. But I will tell you that this is not the current Beast Boy, and I don't think that he's actually looked like this since... Oh geez, a dog's age. Like this is not a terrible head sculpt. I don't think this is bad at all. And I like the green that it's molded in. It's a nice bright green. So I have absolutely no problem with that. The paint applications look pretty fantastic on mine as well. And the hair looks pretty good. The only thing is, again, this is clearly a head sculpt from this era and not from any time current. But you know what? I am happy they made this figure because it really just meant they had to sculpt a head. That's it. Everything else has already been made. And that is what the basic body buck is for. I'm not going to go through his articulation because, let's face it, it's the same as Nightwing's. So I guess we'll just move on to putting together the collect to build Beast Boy. <laughs> <laughs> This is one big chungus. Dude's huge. Can't even find any shoes that fit him. He's stuck wearing this great big stretchy outfit. That way it doesn't rip in two. And then everyone would see his big green ball. And ain't nobody got time for that. And one thing I really like about this guy is there is texture all over his suit. And they really don't have to do that kind of a thing. They could just make it smooth, but they don't. And it really adds to the value of this figure. It adds to the detail and the overall visual appeal of this character. He's got big, hairy forearms and shoulders. His arms look like asparagus. And his face sculpt. I know I might get in trouble for this, but I do kind of see a mix of the Incredible Hulk and Beast. What I think is particularly interesting for this look for Beast Boy is that it's not him turning into an animal. It's just him all beastly. It's more likely from around this time in DC Comics history, so it's actually not that old either. It's, it's really recent. And compared to the rest of this Titans wave, well, you can see. He's a monster! He's also pretty well articulated, too. You know, you got those... Those bits in his arms there that cover up the fact that he's getting a lot of articulation. The sockets there, they do kind of show, you know, if you move them too far, which I'm never a fan of. I like the sockets, I just don't like to see the spaces. So there is quite a bit of articulation that this guy gets, though, which is fantastic. Of course, biceps, swivel 360. Oh my god, I'm going to be completely honest with you and tell you I was not expecting that. Nope. Not at all. I was expecting it to be like, like that at the most. That is a pleasant surprise. Just in case you're wondering, that's what his elbow articulation looks inside of the uh, asparagus. Heads on a rounded joint. And not bad. Not bad at all. Torso. We have articulation by way of a rounded joint, around a ball joint, I'm assuming. And the same thing. For the waist, uh, it's not really super advantageous, but it, it is usable. And here is that groin articulation, typical for McFarlane, uh, except for these collectibilt figures. Actually, they usually get more roundabout motion. That would be that approximation of a thigh cut. Of course, uh, there is double jointed knees. Fantastic. I will say that. Uh, the diapery trunks area will get in the way of some of that posability. You're really going to have to push it into place. And in the process, as you know, with collectibles, you're going to end up loosening his leg and possibly even pulling it off because that's just the name of the game unless you, I don't know, super glue these legs on. And then I think you might lose articulation. And then, of course, we have the big hinge down here in the ankle, and I like this. I'm glad there's not a rounded hinge. I'm glad it's just simplistic like this. It's just an up and down hinge like that, along with a pivot and a gigantic middle of the ball toe articulation. So now what do I think about the Titans wave, along with the gold label Target exclusive Beast Boy figure? Well, as you can see, 
I've clearly cut Nightwing's bangs because I just couldn't take it. There was too much going on there. I completely understand what they were going for with that design. I just feel like it kind of got a little bit lost in translation when it came to the practical, uh, you know, uh, implementing of the spaghetti hair. I do wish that Nightwing was either a brand new buck or a, a larger naked buck of some kind using the teen buck of Connor Kent and John Kent and well pretty much everyone who's a smaller teen I feel like is not big enough for him and that he should be perhaps a little larger. Other than that though I you know I think this is a great wave of figures. This is one that I was really stoked about. I definitely think they're worth your time and effort going to hunt down a fantastic wave of figures in general. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a DC day everybody. And as usual, take care.